Okay, so uh, I'm not going to take that from you as is. Uh, I can take that from every other person, but um, not you as is. All right, so, um, so let's begin. Let's start with variables. I told you the computer is very dull, all right? The computer is very dull. You can't even tell garbage from not, not, not garbage. You, can, it, you have to tell the computer practically everything you want to do. And well, the computer is just like a child, all right? But well, not just like a child. I think that's how we adults to learn. You, you have to, for, and, and that's, that's one of the things that they have learned, um, those computer scientists guys that build all of this beautiful stuff for us. They try to look at how we learn as humans, and then they try to make the computer mirror that learning process because um, in so doing, it becomes easier for us to relate with the computer since we learn the same way. So if I want to tell you as is um, what a pen looks like, I'm, I'm most likely going to show you a picture, all right? And tell you this is a pen. This is a pen, say after me, this is a pen, all right? Okay, so you're going to look at this picture right now and you're going to say, okay, so this is what a pen looks like, it's okay. It has this shape and all that. But then one of the things that would help you um, know this item is that when I tell you this is a pen, you're going to go into your mind and create a space for these objects that you're seeing right now. Now, this thing doesn't happen manually in the sense that you don't use your hand, go into your brain, dig, 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 create a place and then write pen, all right? No, but mentally what happens is you go into your mind, you create a space and then you create this thing called pen inside your mind so that tomorrow when I say, get me a pen, you know, okay, I, I am asking you to get a pen. So you already know what I'm asking you for. But then what if what I'm asking you for is something like this? Now, this is a pen and this is a pen. So something tells you, okay, this is easy pen, all right? And then this is Huon pen, okay? So all of a sudden now, I have to now create another space inside my mind to say, yeah, though, though a pen is a pen, but this one is easy pen, this is a Huon pen. And then what if I bring out another pen? So you see, I can, I can um, have different kinds of pens in my head, all right? But at every point in time, whenever I want to introduce a new kind of pen, I have to create a space in my mind. So when I have three pens on the table, I don't have a third pen here. If I have two pens like this on the table and I say, give me a pen, the next question you're going to ask me is which? Is it the easy pen? or the Huion pen. And the reason you're doing that is because inside of your head, you've created a space to say, okay, yes, both are pens, but one is easy pen and one is Huion pen. That's what we do when we create variables for the computer. We try to tell the computer what we are doing. So we can create a new pen and call it easy pen, all right? And then we can create another pen and call it Huion pen. So easy pen, we can describe it this way. Um, yellow top and um, transparent barrel. And then that's the easy pen, all right? And then Huion pen, we can describe it as black ultra black digital pen. All right, so this is me telling the computer what each of these look like, all right? So that's, that's basically it. This easy pen now is a variable. Quion pen is a variable. So what I'm telling the computer is this. Whenever I mention easy pen, I'm asking you for this one with a yellow top and a transparent barrel. Whenever I mention Quion pen, I'm asking you for this one with the black um, barrel all through and no top. So that's basically what we do with variables. It's a way of creating a space inside of the computer's memory so that when you mention something, all right, 
um, the computer knows what you're talking about. So to show you that, I can just add a cell under this and then say, computer, what is easy pen? Guess what the computer is going to print out? Okay, sorry, I have not run this. So guess what the computer is going to print out? It's going to print out yellow top, transparent bar. Hooray, the computer is smart. No, it's not. <laughs> we just told you what to do. So when I tell the computer, print, computer, what is the Huion pen? All right. It's going to tell me black digital pen. Okay, so that's basically what we do when we create variables. We're just educating the computer by telling the computer, this is this, this is this, so that when we're writing our code and we just mention, please computer, get me that Huion pen. The computer already knows what we're trying to refer to. When we say computer, get me the easy pen, we know what we're trying to refer to. So let's take this variable just a notch higher. Now you will notice that these things are not very readable the way they are right now because I did not use any space. And um, one of the things that Python frowns at is having space in variable names. If I want to use Python programming language to create these variables the way they are, I'm going to run into an error because Python doesn't allow you to use space. So how then do we ensure readability? There's something called snake case, which is a way of writing variables in Python. And all it just does is to say, hey, use the underscore to create like a snake or a chain of, <laughs> of words. All right, so that chain of words, what it does basically is to just help create readability. So we call this snake case, all right? Um, or serpent case, if you like. If you're coming from the world of JavaScript or from other worlds, okay? They have what they call camel case. I'm going to show you what camel case looks like. So now if I tell the computer easy pen, this is what the computer is going to do for me. Yeah. So now the computer now knows, okay, so this easy pen replaces the previous easy pen that you had. Please remember if I'm moving very fast, just capture me and then tell me um, to slow down, all right? So, so that works for me. Um, so this is what I mean by camel case. Easy pen. It looks like a home. So um, for this other one, it will look like this. Huion is usually the first part of the, the variable name is usually um, in small letter, then every other part is in capital letter. So um, here you have Huion pen, and then you can have something like this, people in class. You can have something like this. Um, so um, this way I can, Tell the computer, same thing uh, here. So when you see easy pen is this, when you see Huion pen also written anyway, uh, it's this. And when I say the people in class today, um, the people in class are Aaron, uh, Aziz, I'm trying to maintain an alphabetical order here. Chris, uh, who else is in class? Okay, Martin, MC. Yeah. Okay, data. No, M before data. So, Martin, I hope I get the spelling correctly. No, okay, it's double A. It's double A. So, Martin. Okay, then data. All right, so when I run this now, uh, if I ask computer, computer, I need an easy pen, it tells me this here. I can also ask the computer, sorry, to give me um, easy, 
and it repeats the same thing. What if I ask the computer, computer, tell me the people in class today. So, so that's basically what variables are, just containers. Um, Python doesn't care how you write the variables, whether you write a string, um, a text, you know, a line of text that just has plenty words jumbled together without space or whatever. The only thing Python insists on is, please do not use space in your variable names. And um, yeah, so that's, that's usually one of the things that you have to be careful with when you're starting, um, when you're doing Python. Um, just use names that you too can remember because most times when you're writing your code, you have to make reference to that variable. So if you use the name that you cannot really remember, you will be on your own. All right, so, um, so, so far, do we have any questions when it comes to variables? If there is, I'd be glad to take it now. If there isn't, I'll be glad to proceed. So would there be any question when it comes to variables? Uh, okay, great. Now, so I think I can proceed with question. All right, so the next thing we want to look at are the data types. Now, um, Python accepts basically four kinds of data types. Um, either numbers, in which case they are whole numbers, that's an integer or floats or strings, in which case is a word or text, if you like, Boolean, in which case is a true or false value. These are basically the only um, number types. Now, in other programming languages, you have some, some of them have like 10 different types. You, have, For instance, in Java, you have int, you have Boolean, you have string, you have char, I think, and then varchar is varchar in Java, I can't remember, or some, some languages have about 10 different types. But hey, Python makes things easy. And that's why we all love Python, right? So uh, Python just says, see, whatever you want to put, is either a number or a word or a true or false value. So those are basically the four kinds that you want. So um, let's look at four quantities or four variables. Let's look at the age of the oldest person in this class, all right? So let me call that age of oldest person. Let's look at another variable. Um, let's look at the, uh, what, what will be the right thing to do? Okay, best food. No, let me not use best food for now. Let me use um, gender. Would I use gender now? Or let me use, I want to use something that has a true false value. Okay, hey, let me use number of people in class. Uh, so I could say, something like uh, dear up to 10. This is just a word example, right? That's why the variable name is very long, but you shouldn't do this for your own safety. Because <laughs> um, you shouldn't have a variable name that is this long. Okay, and um, let me take name of uh okay name of um let me use the young guests person all right so the age of the oldest person is okay let me also put something like this height of median person, that's the person that has the median age, all right? So let me say um, the age of the oldest person, I don't know, but we're just going to use an imaginary person because I don't want to offend anybody. But um, let me just say the age of the oldest person in this class is 80, so it's just an imaginary age, all right? Um, are there up to 10 people in this class? Is it true or false? So let me say false because they're not up to 10. 
Then the name of the youngest person in this class, let me use Mike. And the height of the person, let me use 1.63 in meters. Okay, so these are four different, um, these are four different kinds of variables that we can ask Python to keep in this memory so that later in the course of writing a program or whatever we're writing, we could make reference to that. So the first is the age of oldest person. Second is, are they up to 10 people? The third is, what's the name of the youngest person? And then the fourth is the height of the median person. You would notice that for this one, the age of the oldest person is a number, but it's a whole number, all right? So because we usually tell our ages most times it's a whole number. So um, this is an integer int. This one, whether there are 10 people or not, that's a true or false, this is a Boolean. Then string is a text or a word, whichever one you prefer to call it. And we always put string in inverted commas. Whether you use single or double quotes, it's okay. Python doesn't discriminate. Some other languages might discriminate, but Python doesn't discriminate. So um, anything you put is fine. Anything you put is fine. Then height of median person is a number, but it has floating points. So that's why it's called float. Floating points are also called decimal places, right? So let me run this. Um, cannot assign this. Oh, sorry. Okay. So um, I, I'm just going to insert another cell here so that we can tell Python to tell us the type. And this type is a keyword. We're going to go to get to keywords shortly. But I, I want Python to tell me the type. What variable type is this age of the oldest person? So when I do that, Python is going to tell me it's an integer. All right? Python, this other variable called, are they up to 10 people? I want you to tell me what the type is. All right, so I'm just going to do this and run this here. And it's telling me it's a boolean, that's bool for short. Okay, then Python, this last one, or this third one here, the name of the youngest person in the class, what kind of, uh, what kind of, what, what kind of, what's the type? There's a string, all right? And then this last one, which is the height of the median person, Python, you tell me the type. And Python tells me it's a float, which is a floating point number. So that's basically um, what the kind of data you can put into Python. You either put them, uh, either put an integer, a Boolean value, a string, or a floating point number. Okay, so let's advance things a bit. Now let's talk about um, data structures. Some people might want to call this collections, but uh, if you call it collections, well, some people might come for you. But basically, Python has four key data structures. There are more than four, actually, but four are the most prominent. The first are lists. And when we say collections or data structures, you know, most times, what you want to analyze in Python will be in a group. For example, if I want to analyze um, the number of people in this class, it's a group of people. If I want to analyze, maybe I run an analysis about the number of cars in England, it's a group. I want to analyze the number of people who, who show up for class every Saturday, the group. I want to analyze everything you want to analyze, basically, most times would be in groups. So what kind of groupings does Python allow? so that it can allow you to run your analysis. That's basically what those data structures are. There are four kinds of groupings, you know, um, popular groupings that Python allows. We have lists, we have dictionaries, we have sets, and we have um, tuples. All right, so 
Let's play with this, each of these four. I'm going to convert this to Markdown. Markdown means it's text, basically. So Python will not see this as a code, right? Okay, so let's look at lists. A list is a collection of things. It can be a collection of numbers, a collection of names, a collection of floats, a collection of strings, collection of anything, all right? And it's just basically um, Python's way of saying, okay, I think some people think that a list is like Python's native, or if you like to call it the most popular kind of collection that Python deals with. So let's look at this. Let's look at this um, list. So if I want to say how many people are in class again, I can use this as a list people in class. Lists are usually created by this, um, by opening square brackets, open and close square brackets. And then because I've already put this uh, earlier, I'm just going to copy this and paste this here. So when I tell Python, these are the people in class. And I come in the next line and I tell Python, Python, who are the people in class? You can see it gives me the lists, all right? If you notice, the difference between what we had here and what we had here is that there was no square brackets. So that's why when we tell Python, Python, tell me what type these people in class is, it will tell us it's a string. For example, let me just do this now. Let me just copy this. Okay. And put this here. No. Okay, so let me tell Python type people in class. You'll notice that this one, Python tells me is a list. What of the second one? Type people in class. And let's see what Python tells me. Python tells me this is a string, but hey, they have the same content. The difference is that because of these square brackets, Python is seeing this one as a list while it's seeing this other one here as strings. What is the implication? The implication of having one as a string and one as a list is seen in this thing called indexing. Indexing, is a game changer, all right? And it's, it's, it's one of the major things that are going to differentiate you as a programmer. It's, it's one of the major breakthroughs, one of the things you have to learn, all right? That would help you, um, you know, be a great programmer. So I, I'm just putting it here so that I'll remember that I need to touch this. Okay, so we've talked about lists. Let's talk about another kind of collections, dictionaries. Okay, before we talk about dictionaries, let's talk about tuples, people in class. So this time, if I want to create a tuple, instead of putting it in square brackets, I'm going to use the regular parentheses that we know every day, our everyday parentheses. And I'm going to put the same um, stuff here. Okay, so let me different. Let me use a differentiator. Um, let me call this one one, so that there's a differentiator, right, between the two. So I press enter. Now, I tell Python, tell me the type of people in class. Obviously, it's a list. What of the type for people in class one.
Okay. Now, <laughs> I just remembered. It it tells me is a it's a string. <laughs> okay. Do you know why? Who knows why? It's simple. Um, Python's default response to anything inside of this regular bracket is to create a is to create a a tuple out of it. All right. So um, let me come and ask, say this now. So now it tells me it's a tuple. So that's why um, sometimes this is one of the nuances of Python because they use this regular parenthesis to signify both when you're creating a tuple and when you're entering anything in Python. So Python's default uh, method of um, what do you call it? Default um, data entry type is a tuple. So that's why when you put that, it will just recognize it as a list. Okay, don't worry, you get to get used to all of this much later. So let me create um, another one called people in class, I'll put people in class two. Again, I'll use the same names of people in class. And this time I'm going to use this curly braces. So when I ask Python, what is the data type of people in class two? It tells me it's a set. Remember, we have one, two, three, four. Now, for people in class three, let's create a dictionary. So the only difference in this case, we still use curly braces, but the only difference in this case is that a dictionary, just like a dictionary, um, an English dictionary or whatever language dictionary you use, every dictionary has two parts, the word it describes and then the description. So you can call it key and value. The key is usually the word, um, whatever word it is. And then the value is the explanation. So let's assume that we registered everyone in class and then we gave you people registration numbers based on your alphabetical classification. So um, this time we will have another one here, maybe registration number 001, all right? And we'll have a colon pointing to this text here to say, hey, this is 001. Then we will have another person here. And let me put this. We we'll have another person here. So we we'll have registration number 002. And then we'll have this person, Aziz. Then we'll have registration number 003. His name is Chris. Remember, because they are texts or strings, I'm putting them in inverted comma. Then we have registration number 004. His name is Martin. So we'll put that in added commas. And then we have registration number 005, whose name is in data. So what we have done is we have created the key. This is the key and this the values. All right, so let's run this. And let's now ask Python to tell us the type, people in class three. It tells us the dictionary. So, like I said, one of the reasons why we bother analyzing things in collections is because most of the things, most of the variables that we're going to encounter in the course of using Python for analysis or creating programs are in collections, all right? So that's why we analyze them in collections. And like I told you earlier, one of the most powerful things about collections is indexing. So what is indexing? Indexing is the ability to pick out an item 
inside a collection and be able to run something, run an analysis on it. So let's play a bit with the index for this first one, which is the list. How do you index? Okay, let me just leave this. I will just add another line here, but I just didn't want to make it too long. So let's take the first, which is people in class, all right? How do we index in Python? Python is a zero-based programming language, which means counts and starts from zero. So this item in the list, all right? Oh, sorry. Uh, I need to put all of this in their own dotted commas. I see. I think that was why Python told me there was this one was a string because they were not all in their own commas. So this is one of the things you have to watch out for. So I'm sure when I run these people in class one right now, it's going to tell me it's a tuple without me having to explicitly, explicitly state tuple there. Okay, so sorry, sorry about that. Just fix this, fix this, and fix this. Okay, so this should work now. So, so when I ask for people in class one, it's gonna tell me the tuple right now. Oh yeah, sorry, it was it was the inverted commas that I missed. Okay, so um, so I was talking about indexing. All right, now the way to do indexing is to use these square brackets and refer to the number or the position. So Arun is index zero. This is index one, index two, three, four, all right? Because there are five people starts from zero. So if I tell Python, Python, give me the index, the person in index number zero in that list of people in class, it's gonna tell me it's Aaron. One, Aziz, two, Chris, three, Martin, right? So um, four, data, right? So that's that's what indexing does. Indexing goes to take the, 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 the what is inside of there. Now let's index people in class one. Let's see what is in zero. And then let's see what Python tells us. Okay, you can see it's the same thing. Two, Chris, like that. So what of, how do we index this one? It's three, Martin. If I change this to people in class two, and I run it. Now, you'll see, you'll see a note here. Python is warning me, it's telling me a set object is not subscriptable, which means that the index operation cannot run on a set, all right? And if I also change this to the dictionary, which is uh, people in class three, it also tell me the same problem because a dictionary object is not subscriptable. Right? So um, somebody will now ask me, how do we reach into what is inside a dictionary? Um, there are different ways you can do that, but let me not go there yet. I will, I will get there shortly, okay? So um, I don't want to start talking about the dot notation, but we'll get there shortly, we'll get there shortly. Okay, so let's talk about keywords in Python. I've introduced two of them basically. Um, I've introduced print, I've introduced type. Now, Python has about 
can't remember now, but um, if you if you go to if you go to the internet and you search Python keywords, just a second. Uh, so you are going to see a list of all the keywords. I'm just going to look for the blue tree schools and I'm going to share my screen right now. So um, let me share my screen. Okay. So this is one of the sites that I, uh, why I like W3 schools is that they are, their courses are, you know, very like straight to the point. You can see that they have the whole of Python in one place, everything about Python, you know, I, I like, and they are very short, you know, straight to the point, no stories. So these are some of the Python built-in keywords. Um, they are reserved names. You can use them as variable names or stuff. All right, there are plenty of them, but um, you will get to know all of this as we progress. But the two that we're looking at right now, we're looking at um, type, and we are looking at we're looking at um, we're looking at print. Now, somebody would want to call type and print key um, functions, but again, it's just a matter of semantics. So let's just go see how these two work. As we proceed in our journey in Python, we're going to learn how um, the others work, right? So let's just um, go back to our notebook and... Okay. So, uh, all right. I can tell Python to print this people in class, all right, this variable here. So, let me just uh, do this and copy it. So, Python prints people in class. And I do that and I run it. You can see Python is printing that for me. If I say print people in class three, which is a dictionary, it prints it out for me, the key and the values, all right? So that's basically what print does. Print takes um, whatever I tell it to print and print it out. I can decide to say Python prints um, let me just do this. Python prints the names of the people in class are. Then I want to tell Python to print this list, people in class. Okay. So that will take me to this next point, which are special formats. Special formats are ways, basically, you bring out stuff in Python outputs. So let me just copy this and put that here, all right? So uh, just let me replace this because of the people who might want to use this notebook later. So print people in class. Okay, so, yep. So the people that want to use this notebook later can, you know, can, yeah, have access to that. So now I want to print the names of the people in class, all right? There, yeah. Python has a lot of ways to do that, but, for me, the most popular way for me is what we call the f-string. Now, if you go through other tutorials, you'll see things like dot formats and all of that with percentages and placeholders and very scary things. But the f-string 
is like very straightforward, very, very straightforward. And how does the F string work? Very simple. You just put an F in front of what you want to print so that Python knows that you want to introduce a special format. And then when you get to the point where you want the format to show, you just put in curly brackets and put in the variable name that you want Python to deal with at that point in time. And that's it, very simple. Every other one comes with very scary code, percentages here and there and all that, but the F string is very straightforward. So when I run this now, what Python tells me is the name of the people in class are Aaron, Aziz, Chris, Martin, and Dita. All right. So this is this is how it works. The F string is very straightforward. And that's why I like using it because I don't have to remember a lot of syntax. And that is for text. Okay. Um, what are for numbers? So remember. Sorry, I'm going to scroll back up. We had this variable called age of oldest person in class. So we had the age of the oldest person, you know, um, being given as 80, all right? So let me just come here and put in another and say Python prints the age of the oldest person in class. So print something like this, the age of the oldest person in class is, and then print the variable age of oldest person in class, and that is it. So let me get this a little bit on me. Yep, when I run this, it says the age of the oldest person in class is, then it goes to that variable. Remember, we created this space in Python's memory to say, hey, create this in your memory, you know, the age of the oldest person. So it goes and picks whatever is written as the age of the oldest person in class there, and then returns it. Okay, so that's how F string works. But then sometimes you might need to, um, you might need to change the format. Like for example, Let's say we want to make this, instead of a whole number, I want to make it a floating point. All we need to do is to say, um, let me just copy this so that I don't have to keep retyping. I'll say Python, print out the age of the oldest person in class. But then this age of the oldest person, I need this age of the oldest person in two decimal places, all right? That's what this dot 2f means. So I'm just telling Python, print out whatever variable that is there in two decimal places. So when I run this, you'll see that that is converted to two decimal places. That's what this dot 2f is, in addition to whatever you have here, the variable you want Python to deal with, all right? So, um, that's why I like the F string. But if you are very, very interested in the other ones, I could also display them. But F string is usually the most straightforward type. Okay. Um, so it's basically the same thing here. H equals to 27. I'm just using this as an example. And then I'll tell Python print his age is in three decimal places. And Python prints out that three decimal places. So that's what this dot 2F dot 3F. Only 10 decimal places dot 10f like that. Okay, so um, but just for context, um, this is how it looks like if you want to use the other format. So it would be like this: Python prints the age of the. Okay, let me use this shorter one. His age. Is then I will just put a curly bracket to just tell Python, hey, what is going to be here is going to be um, a special stuff, like it's going to be a variable, but this curly brackets are called placeholders here. Just to tell Python, whatever I'm going to tell you to put the formats, all right? 
that's the place you should put it. So age. So in this case, I'm just telling Python, his age is in this placeholder, put the age for me. So when I run this, I get the same thing. His age is this, all right? Uh, but I'm just telling Python, okay? Just um, use this. So you can see this is the second way, which is dot format and it brackets with the variable. Uh, but it, it looks weird. For example, if I want to have two variables here, his age is this and his height. So I, I possibly I'm going to do his age is this um, and okay. And we continue. Um, I'm probably going to do this here as a plus. Okay, no. This H is this plus. Okay, I think it should work. And his height is. And I'm going to go and grab this other variable here, which is the height of median person, all right? So just going to grab this variable, and go paste it here inside of formats. So, so this should work, yep. So his age is 27 and his height is, so you can see every place where I needed a variable to show, um, I had to put a placeholder. Then at the end, I put the dot format and I make a list of all the variables that um, I want. So if you look at some Python textbooks, especially those that use Python 2, you would see that the, the uh, that Python required as a then that you put in the numbers so that it knows what you're doing, all right? But in the recent Python, you don't need all of that. So that's it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what these do. Now, um, I think at this point, I will want to introduce the dot notation so in this case now, remember people in class is a dictionary. So when I say, I remember there are two, there are two parts of a dictionary, keys, values. So when I say, give me people in class three dot keys, um, and I say Python should print this out. Let me see what it gives me. No, 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 no. okay. Let me see if this brings it out. Yeah, so it's it's um, it tells me these are like I told you these are the keys, the registration numbers of the people in class. All right, but then if I come here and say print the values, it gives me their names. All right, so that's how you reach um, this. And let me see if I can subscript. I think I should be able to subscript here, zero. Let's see, aha, it's not subscriptable, which means that we can reach it with the index. Um, so let me see. Let me see if the values, okay. Let me see if I can subscript it like this. Let's see if that makes a difference. Aha, okay, so it's not subscriptable. Okay. So, pardon me, it's been a while since I played with dictionaries, so um, I, I just have to do all that. All right, so 
this is where we stop for questions. Please ask them plenty of questions so that we can know that we are on track. If you keep quiet on me, I'm going to be very, very worried. So questions, if you have them, I'd be glad to take them. Please go ahead, Martin. No questions today. Okay. Is it very, very clear? I want to thank you very much. Yeah, it was, uh, it was clear. Okay. Your explanation of the basics of uh, Python. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ne next week, I will be absent. Oh, okay. Well, going to miss you. But your um, your training is it recorded or what? Yes, we have the recordings. I will oh, post yeah. them on YouTube. So oh, I'm, I'm cool. going to put them up on YouTube and put. I uh, probably I'm going to give you the link. Okay. Um, and yeah. Will yeah. the will the link be published in uh, Slack? Yes, it will be published in Slack. Oh, great! Thanks. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ugo. Yeah, please. Very, very uh, nice explanation. Okay. Just, just wanted to ask, uh, have you, at, at the beginning, you mentioned that you covered the control flow. Yes, we, we started that last week, but we can, we will still touch it again next week. We have not finished it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. No problem. I'm looking forward to that. Right, okay. right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Bye. All right then.